So welcome to the Amazon Lit YouTube channel where we provide a ton of content for Amazon sellers and e-commerce sellers so you can grow your business from the perspective of Sebastian and myself who have built a massive $25 million a year um, Amazon business and we continue to grow and flourish in the industry. We're a top 100 Amazon seller and we're continuing to innovate and come up with new ideas to maintain that status in Amazon. Today we're going to talk about profits, right? So profits and how to look at a listing and understand how much money you're making off of it without using the AMZ Scout Pro Calculator or RevSeller or the Sellers app without having to use any of those. You can just look at a listing and analyze the numbers in your head. Right? And what this will do will train your mind to make you a better buyer, a better purchaser. Because at the end of the day, Amazon, the forefront, the most important people in our entire company are our buyers. Right? Because one, they're feeding production downstairs. So if they're not producing orders, then downstairs, the 14 to 15 employees that we have working downstairs in our warehouse, they don't have work. So it's our buyer's responsibility and it's their main focus to bring products in, right? And that's great and all. How, you can bring products into your warehouse, but how do you ensure that they're profitable products, right? And I'll show you exactly how we ensure that they're profitable products and how we train our team members to analyze a listing to make sure that it's profitable with the quickness because it's all about productivity. So let's say, for example, we have a product we're going to use this, uh, this Go Lamp. So we got this Go Lamp, right? Let's say, I don't know what this sells on on Amazon. I don't even know if it's on Amazon. It's just something we had laying around. Um, but let's say this Go Lamp is selling for $20 on Amazon.com, right? So $20 is the list price. It's listed for $20 on Amazon.com. And now you have a fee that is standard across Amazon. It varies between categories and between price points. Like there's some differences in the referral fee um, for some grocery products. There's also some differences in the referral fee for health and personal care products. But for this conversation, we're going to go with the standard referral fee of 15%. Right? So referral fee. 15%, right, and that's across the board for the most part, right? So what we're gonna do, knowing that Amazon takes 15%, that tells me that the most I can get back from this product is 85% of this list price, right? So if we take 15% of 20, which is $3, we're gonna subtract $3 from this, right? So we're subtracting the referral fee from the list price. And now the next thing we have to subtract is the shipping. Now this is, it says it's on the box, it weighs less than one pound. So I'm, I'm assuming with the cardboard and, and just, I haven't weighed this product, right? And I'm not telling you to weigh these products. You, a lot of you are gonna be like sending me messages like, hey Eric, but I don't have a scale. I don't drive around with a scale. I'm not telling you to weigh these products. What I'm telling you to do is take a guesstimate, right? Based on the, the weight that it gives you on the package, especially if it's like a shampoo, a conditioner, deodorant, they all have weights on them. Food items all have weights on them. Um, but what you need to consider is this says that it weighs less than one pound, but when it says it weighs less than one pound, it's talking about the, the, the product inside weighs less than one pound. So what that's telling me is probably the whole box is probably a pound and a half. So if it was a pound and a half, this product to ship FBA, from an Amazon fulfillment center would cost 476. Right? And these are called the pick and pack fees.
And if you're wondering how I got this pick and pack fee, we have a video we recorded a couple months ago. It's called FBA fees on Amazon. And I break down these pick and pack fees ridiculously. And I'm talking like in depth where you can analyze them. And actually right now we're gonna post um, a screenshot of where I pulled this 476 from so you can see where I got it and you can see that I'm not just throwing these numbers out of anywhere. Um, so right here, here's a screenshot, check it out. And now another fee, which can be the last fee, there may be a fourth fee that we need to deduct from the listing price and we'll get into that. But the third fee that's just required is your cost of goods, right? Your COGS cost of goods and that's how much you paid for this product so we're going to say that we paid five dollars for this product right so five dollars for this product we're subtracting all these from the twenty dollars right and now the fourth fee that you may want to include in here just so you have an idea is let's say shipping right so say for us i know shipping is about two cents per unit it's about uh one and a half cents per pound to ship our products to fba centers but if you're sending out ups or fedex um which i don't even think amazon takes fedex shipments anymore but um if you're using ups or usps and you might be paying 50 cents a unit to get it to amazon so that's something you want to consider when you're doing this mental math so let's just say we got here, right? Let's say you know it costs you about 50 cents per unit um, to send these products to Amazon. All right, so now we're gonna analyze the profits for this product, right? And this should all be done mentally up here in your head. You should be training your brain to be able to look at these products and understand what the profits are just by looking at the listing price and knowing the approximate weight and what the cost of shipping is and then what your COGS is, your cost of goods. So here, right, I'm just gonna do this, uh, I'll do it on a calculator in a second, but you're not gonna, you might not have a calculator, right? And I'm encouraging you not to use a calculator because this is just a rough estimate to see if the product's even worth looking to into any further, right? So here we got, what's this, 550 plus 475, that's 1026 plus uh, $3, so that's thirteen twenty-six dollars uh, minus tw or 20 minus thirteen twenty-six is what? 664, I believe, 664, right? And that's what my mind spit out. That's an approximate estimate of what the profit is. So let's just see how accurate I was based on my mental math. So I got this calculator here. So we got 20 minus the referral fee of $3 minus the pick and pack fee of 476 minus the cost of goods of $5 and minus 50 cents for shipping to Amazon. It's actually 674. So I was 10 cents off of my mental math. So 674, right? So the profits on this product, and this is the importance of doing mental math because even though I was 10 cents off, that 10 cents isn't making a, a game changing decision when I'm deciding if I wanna purchase this product or not, you know? But I got a rough estimate of what the approximate profits are for this product. And the approximate profits for this product right here are 674. After all Amazon's fees, the referral fee, the pick and pack fee, my cost of goods, and then shipping to Amazon, this product will net me $674 in gross profit, right? And why do I say gross profit? Because what's not included in here is your cost of labor, right? Your expenses, like your warehouse, what you pay your employees, your workman's comp, your boxes, your tape, the way we operate is we don't really have, we have a number, I know exactly what that number is. I know to a T what, the, what our expenses are. Um, and you should know what your expenses are as well. And based on those expenses, we have a minimum cutoff. So let's say for your company, the minimum profit you wanna make is $3 on a product, right? Because that's what it costs you to produce that product. You know, to keep the lights on, to pay the utilities, to pay your rent, pay your employees, you need to be making at least $3 a unit to be covering those expenses. So having that in mind, you know just looking at this profit of 674, knowing that the minimum you need to make on a product is $3, you know that 674 is well over $3. So this is a great product to buy.
right? Great product to buy. Now, let's say we're gonna change this. Let's say the same product, the distributor you're getting at for $5 no longer has it and you could only get it for $10. So this changes to 10 and now this would be minus $5 because the cost of goods went up. So 674 minus $5 is now 174. Right, so you're now making on this same product, if the cost of goods doubled from $5 to $10, which happens, it's usually not double, but it happens, you might get a 20% increase, a 25% um, increase from your wholesaler or distributor. And if that happens, you have to reanalyze the product. So just looking at this product, if we were now paying for this uh, $10 instead of $5, our gross profit now is $1.74. So if you have a number in mind that you need to be making at least $3 on a product to remain pro a profitable company, this $1.74 no longer cuts it. And this product went from a great product at the cost of goods of $5 to a not so great product at the cost of goods of $10. So all of this stuff should just be like clockwork, all right? And we're gonna go over an example of another product because I want you to fully understand this. And really, the best way to train your brain is by experiencing it for yourself. So what I like to do a few times a week is I just test myself, right? I'll pull up a product and I'll guess the weight of it and then I understand the, the fee for that weight and then I'll subtract that, subtract the referral fee, subtract my cost of goods, and then I get our profit, right? And I'm doing this all day long. You know, I put together $40,000, $50,000 wholesale orders a few times a week. Sometimes they're a little smaller, sometimes they're a little bigger, but like this is what I do for a living. I buy products to sell on Amazon. So this, to me, is like second nature. I can do this stuff in my sleep. Anytime I go to my local store, if I go to a Walgreens, first of all, I can't even walk into a Walgreens because I just can't believe the markup they have on these products, knowing the prices that we get them for. But um, I, I'm always looking like, okay, could I sell this on Amazon? I might scan a product, right? Say it's uh, Neutrogena wipes. Might scan a product. Oh, Walgreens has it on the on the discount rack for $1.25 per pack. There's a four pack selling on Amazon for $19.99. So the cost of goods, $1.25 times four is $5, right? So instantly I'm left with minus the referral fee of if it's selling for $20, it's still $3 for the referral fee. And then minus that $5, now I'm at $12. Now I'm at $12. Then I got the cost of shipping, which is going to be about $4.76. And that tells me this is a profitable product, right? If I found it on the discount rack at $1.25. But I can promise you, you're not finding Neutrogena wipes uh, at, for $1.25. And if you find Neutrogena wipes for $1.25, give me a call because I'll buy about, I don't know, maybe eight to 10,000 of them. But um, we're going to go over another product here because I want this to be like second nature to you. So I'm going to need a couple minutes here to erase this board and we're going to go over another product here just so I can show you how this math works again. All right. So before we get into this, I want to just review the standard fee. So first, you have your listing price. This is the price that the product is selling on Amazon for. And then you have a referral fee, which is a negative but this is a negative, right? And then you have your pick and pack fee. Which is a negative. Then you have your cost of goods. Or your COGS. Which is a negative. These are all fees that you're going to subtract from the listing price to get your gross profit. Right? And then you may also have, which we discussed before, shipping or maybe prep center. Right? You may have those fees as well. So the next product we're going to look at, I got it right here. It's Italian Organic Extra Virgin Olive Oil, 17 fluid ounces. It's actually phenomenal. Uh, one of our distributors gave it to us as an example. We went to the Italian bakery down the street. He also gave us some pepper as, in, as a sample. Went to the Italian bakery down the street, got some bread, poured this in a plate, sprinkled some pepper on it. It's fire. It's phenomenal. But 
let's say this product is, is probably a little more expensive. It's uh, extra virgin isle, olive oil. I'm going to say it's it probably sells around twelve dollars. So let's say this product listed on Amazon is selling for thirty dollars. That's the listing price. All right. So now the referral fee. 15% of 30, 10% of 30 would be $3, and then another 5% would be $1.50. So 15% of 30 is $4.50. So we're subtracting $4.50, and then we're subtracting the pick and pack fee. Now this is 17 fluid ounces, so it's actually, but it's in a glass bottle, something you need to consider. Um, whenever you're selling glass bottles is usually the glass is heavier than the contents inside So I'm going to just take a guess and say this falls in the large standard two to three pounds And I'm going to say cost of shipping for this product is five dollars and twenty six cents Right now we need cost of goods now. I know olive oil um, is expensive. This is first cold press extra virgin olive oil um, so I'm going to just take a guess and let's say the cost of goods on this product is $13. So now we're going to subtract that $13 and we're going to keep it standard. And let's say your shipping or your prep center fee, 50 cents a unit, whatever it is. Let's just keep it at 50 cents. All right, so now we're going to add all these up mentally because we want to trade our brains, right? I'm going to have a calculator and we're going to get the exact number, but mentally. I know I made some mistakes in mental math in the, in the beginning of the video, but they're trivial. It's 10 cents here, 25 cents here. If the difference between me picking up a product or not picking up a product is 25 cents, then probably I shouldn't be picking up the product, right? So the importance of mental math and not being 100% accurate, but getting an estimate of what my gross profits is, are, is important. Right, and so what we're trying to figure out here is our gross profits, which is profits before expenses. All right, so now we're gonna do some mental math to try to figure out an estimate, right? Because if you're off 25 cents, if you're off 40 cents, if you're off 10 cents, if, if the difference between you picking up a product or not picking up a product is 10 cents, then maybe you shouldn't be picking up that product at all, right? So the importance of doing an estimate through mental math, yeah, you may be off a quarter, but it's okay. It's just to, to, to make that quick initial decision to see if you even want to look into the product further, if it's even worth your time, right? So here we got, uh, we're going to add these four up these four fees here. So we got 13, what's that? 1350 plus five is 1850 plus 26 cents is 1875 or 1876 plus four is 2276 plus 50 is 2326. All right, so just by doing basic mental math, I'm guessing that these fees added up were 23.26, and now we're actually gonna check these to see if these fees are accurate. 450 plus 526 plus 13 plus 0.5 is 23.26. All right, so my mental math was on point with this one. It was off 10 cents on the last one, but that 10 cents, it's not a game changer, right? We're trying to just gauge if this product is profitable or not. So 2326, right, which would leave us of a profit of six dollars and seventy-four cents. Yeah, six seventy-four is our gross profit for this product. Six seventy-four. So equals gross profit for this product. So this is what we'd be getting back after we subtract our referral fee, our pick and pack fee, our cost of goods and whatever additional expenses you may have, shipping or prep center. Now the 674, once again, does not include your expenses. So if you have that same number that you know you need to be making a minimum of $3 per product to cover your expenses, to cover expenses, then you know this product is bringing you net profit of $3.74. This is a great product, phenomenal product, right? I would be all over this product. 
Now something else to consider when you're looking at a product like this is it needs to be bubble wrapped because it's in a glass jar. So that's more time consuming and it's more labor intensive. So let's just say instead of, we're gonna make some changes in here. Instead of $13 cost of goods, we had a $16 cost of goods. So that would take this 676 because now it's an additional $3 for the cost of goods. That would take this 676 profit, gross profit, to 374. And now that's the new profit. All right? And now something to consider because this product needs to be bubble wrapped, which means more labor in your warehouse or a higher fee at your prep center because bubble wrap is more time consuming. Right now this 374 it's not much higher than this $3 to cover expenses. So then you have to make a decision if this is a product you want to bring on. Right? And for me personally, 374 on a glass product is right around my cutoff. Right? I would consider it based on how much inventory it's moving, what its velocity is, what its BSR is, um, how many other sellers are on it, will I be dominating the buy box? If I can dominate the buy box and sell 60 to uh, 120 of these a month, for 374 I'd be on it. But if I'm only gonna move 18 of these a month, 374 I'd probably pass on this product. So it's all about understanding your numbers and I can't express it enough how important it is to train your brain to do these things. Just train your brain with repetition on how to understand these fees because these fees are consistent and they're basic, right? The referral fee has been the referral fee of 15% for years. Other than the, the, the specific discounts in certain categories, it's been 15% for years. It's not changing. Now the pick and pack fees, the pick and pack fees here, this is something to be mindful of because these change every year. These go up every single year. They create new categories and they go up. But for the rest of 2019, this 526 for a large standard three to, or two to three pound product, this 526 is pretty standard. And, and, and one more thing I want to express to you is don't beat yourself up if you're off by a pound. Because if you're off by a pound, right, with this pick and pack fee, really it's either a plus 38 cents or a minus. 38 cents if you're off by a pound once you stick start getting over the um, the three pound threshold if you're off by a pound let's say you guess it weighs five pounds but it really weighs six pounds you're it's only an additional 38 cents so that's not a game changer if you're if you're if the difference between you picking up a product or not picking up a product is 38 cents then once again, maybe you shouldn't be picking up that product, right? So understanding the numbers and understanding the information that Amazon provides for you, because all this information Amazon provided to us, the only thing they didn't provide for us is our cost of goods and our shipping or prep center fees, if you have one, right? We don't consider this as a company, we don't consider the shipping and prep center fees, but maybe you do, so that's why I included it here. But Amazon provides the pick and pack fee, the referral fee, and the listing price. The listing price, we usually go off the buy box price, um, the buy box prime seller price, because sometimes the buy box is an FBM seller. Um, but the only information they don't have is your cost of goods. So the same reason why their suggested replenishable inventory um, metrics on Amazon Seller Central are off, at least from our perspective, is because they don't know the cost of goods. So they may be telling us, hey, you sold 300 of these last month. We suggest you order 300 again so you could sell another 300 this month. But they don't know that last month we paid $13 and this month we're paying $16 which took our profit from 674 gross profit to 374. Game changer, Amazon doesn't know that, right? So this is the variable here, this cost of goods. This is what changes. And the more distributors you get and the more vendors you have, the more aggressive you can be with these prices. All right, so let's say you have one vendor who has this product, vendor A has this product for $13, right? And you have another vendor, vendor B has this product for $15, and vendor C has this product for $12, right? You'll be able to kind of navigate a little better, like, okay, which vendor do I want to get it from? And for us, and for you too, you should be looking at the lowest price, the lowest cost of goods that a vendor has to be purchasing it. 
But let's say, right, what we say, these products come in cases of six. So we need 96 units, which is 16 cases. Um, 16 times six is, yes, 96. So we need 16 cases of this. But let's say vendor C only has three cases. So you could only get 18 units from vendor C. And then vendor B or vendor A, the next lowest price, has the remaining 13 cases, which is 78 units, right? For a total of 96 units, which is how many you wanted to order, right? 78 plus 18, 16, that's 96. So, so the total 96 units. Um, you, you may be getting from two vendors, which is okay because what this is going to do, it's going to allow you to now average this price out, right? And how we'd average this price out is we'd take 18 units. So we're going to do some, some math here. So we're going to do, we got 18 units times $12. And then we got another 78 units times $13. So we got 18 times 12. It's $216. And then we got 78 times 13 is $1,014. And now we're looking for an average of those two prices because we pulled them from two different vendors. So we need to get an accurate cost of goods. So we're going to do 1,014 plus 216 is $1,230 is the total that we spent on 96 units. So we're now going to divide that number by 96 and we're gonna get the new cost of goods. So 1230 divided by 96, the new cost of goods is 12.8125. So I would round this to 12.81 is what we rounding down. So the new cost of goods for this product right here, because you pulled it from two different vendors, is $12.81, right? So you leveraged two different distributors, distributor A and distributor B, to get the product at an average cost of good that's lower than if you were just to get all 16 cases from distributor A. Right, and here I'm not even consider considering distributor B because their price is just too outlandish. Um, but who knows, next month maybe distributor B will be the only one in stock. And next month I might want 144 units. And then I could call distributor B and be like, hey, I need 144 units of this. Instead of $15, can you do it for $13.50 if I buy 144 units? Right? And they, may, they might want to move inventory because their price was higher. So most likely, if anybody else has access to all three distributors, they weren't buying from distributor B. So they may have extra inventory. So we went over a lot of information today. We talked about understanding your profits and most importantly, your gross profits by taking the listing price and subtracting your referral fee, your pick and pack fee, your cost of goods, and any additional expenses you may have like shipping or prep center fees. Um, to get your gross profit, and then also understanding your expenses, your expense per ASIN. So taking your expenses, dividing it by how many units you sell a month, and getting an expense per ASIN change the way you analyze your whole company. And it sounds very easy. It's, it's actually, it's a little more complicated than that. And we could go into detail if you need any more information on that. But understanding your, your expenses and understanding your gross profits. And then we also discussed leveraging distributors to get the best price and averaging your cost of goods if you get it from two distributors. So it's a lot of information for you to absorb. Please leave any comments you have below. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Thank you so much for joining. Have a great day.